Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. Big shout out to our sponsors, Triple T Strings, ready to shoot right out of the package. Message them on Instagram or Facebook to get your professionally made strength for beginner, intermediate, or advanced archers. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Quick Shots. I'm your host, Mick Chambers. I'm here with Rick Rona. Hey Rick, how are you doing? Good afternoon. How are you? Really good, man. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. So we met at a Rod Jenkins clinic, which was cool. Um, I had a good time at that clinic. Did you, uh, did you get anything out of that or? Absolutely. Uh, but I was guilty like Rob said, most of us would be, you, you could do this and this and this, you'll get better, but resist that urge to back out to 20 yards and 30 yards and see how much good, how much better you're getting. Well, I did it because I was leaving for elk hunting in about seven or eight days after that. So I had to do it, but I still do the, the, the bale shooting, the hand bow grip the I, I, all seven steps i do time to time but did i devote 21 days in a row uninterrupted no i'd be lying if i said i did but it was great information i still have the sheet i call back on it and i look forward to doing some more when i get some more spare time this spring so it was really cool meeting you and, and we got a chance to talk a little bit i thought wow this guy would be really great to come come on the show so i know you've been busy i know you've been hunting i know you've been busy with work so we're going to get into all that, but uh, how about you, could you do me a favor and just kind of go over your origin story? Like, how did you get into traditional archery? Yeah, no problem. I, uh, I played baseball at Wichita State University and uh, played pro baseball. And the first time I got a chance to go to an alumni baseball game in 1988, uh, I was in a duck hunting only, fishing, duck hunting, stuff like that. But this uh, ex-teammate goes, hey, I'm selling a boat. Anybody want it, man? It's 100 bucks. Well, I just got called up to the big leagues. I had a $100 bill in my pocket, which for me was pretty rare. And I said, uh, I'll look at it, but I shoot left-handed. I do everything in right-handed, except I'm so left-eye dominant. I learned as a young man, I need to shoot a BB gun and a little bow and arrow uh, left-handed because my left-eye dominant dominant so uh it's supposed to help you be a better baseball hitter and that didn't help but that's the case but so i gave this kid a hundred dollars for this old oh i don't even know what brand it is bring it back to the house and i'm shooting the tennis ball at 10 yards and 15 yards and 20 yards i couldn't believe how accurate i could get and i was a newbie first day i go in the woods the next weekend october 11th 1988 I happen to remember that 11 a.m nothing Deer start walking at me from different angles, and I'm standing there. They don't see me. They're looking at me. They see me, but they don't. And every time I try to draw, busted. Go another 200 yards, another doe, busted. I had the adrenaline pumping, and I was hooked. And later that day, I heard a couple deer coming. I didn't wait. I drew and waited on them. A little forked horde came by. I shot at him. I don't know if I hit him, missed high or low, never found the arrow. I can't see blood worth a darn. Anyway, found out, got some help. I missed him, and but I was been hooked ever since. That's that's amazing. That's so awesome. So you just take a bow and just off you off you went. Now, did you? So I know you you try and better yourself though, obviously because you're at the Rod Jenkins Clinic, yeah. right? So it sounds like you're you're doing a lot of work on your game. Is that true? Is that a fair statement? Yeah. Especially. Uh, I started shooting a stick and string about six years ago. Oklahoma has a really nice draw only hunt at a 40,000 acre uh, ammunition depot in McAllister, Oklahoma. It's well known and out of state people can come too. But anyway, and they have a, a shoot and then they have a, if you draw, you get to go. It's traditional archery only, no no electronics, no sights, no range finders. No, maybe last year they let you use a range finder, but uh, but it's been and no bait, no anything. They give you an afternoon to scout, hang a stand, and then you hunt Friday evening, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. And uh, there are some monsters walking around. But anyway, I put in it for years, 
and said, if I ever draw on that, I'm going to have to get a, a recurve or long bow and figure it out. Well, before that happened, I bought one, Samick Sage, $100. It was $150, got it on sale. So you give it $100, I'll take it. Anyway, he sold it to me. Of course, then you buy $100 worth of accessories. The guy saw me coming and I bought it. And again, I shot and shot and I was like, man, I'm not bad at this. Uh, I was messing around with a little string walking, doing a little this, got very accurate and shot a doe. Then I shot another doe and then brought my son the next year and uh, just where I hunt over a feeder and he videotaped me shooting a little eight point man. And I've been hooked ever since. In the last two years, I've taken uh, uh, now I own a nice black widow PSR is what I shoot. And I've taken that elk hunting and elk hunting is very tough, very difficult, especially an old guy like me with bad knees walking up and down the mountain is sure nice carrying a little black widow with the full quiver that might weigh almost two pounds versus, you know, eight pound, nine pound compound. I loved it. And I got where I thought I was deadly enough. If I had an elk inside 30 yards, I could put it in there. Uh, didn't get any shots, but like I said, I'm, I'm hooked on it. Uh, I'm an outside sales guy in the steel business. So last year and a half, been a lot of time at home making calls, working from a computer, working my phone. I have a 40 yard shooting range in my backyard. I've got great neighbors. I have not killed a dog or cat, maybe a squirrel or two, <laughs> but they don't mind. They follow me on Instagram. They think it's cool. I kill this and shoot that. Or most of the time it's just pretty video because uh, shooting with the trad, if they don't come in close, I don't shoot, but I practice a lot. Uh, recently ordered a new bow from Black Widow. It's seven months away. So this spring, I might even dabble with uh, some 3D. I've shot 3D, but not competitively, competitively. But my competitive nature, as much as I like to practice to get good at my craft, a couple of people said, man, you, you got to try it. You, but I'm into coaching baseball, fishing, golf. I'm into a lot. I can't sit still. I'm a high energy guy. I like to get out there and do so. Uh, I'm going to give it a shot, but I don't know competitively if it's worth it or not, but I'm going to give it a try. No, you're dude, So let's, uh, okay. So let's roll back a little bit. So it, the, the, the pro ball thing is amazing to me. So it's like, I've never talked to a pro baller before, you know, and that, that's amazing. And you, you talked about picking up a bow and just going, yep. I'm good at it. Right. And it sounds, it sounds like, uh, some people may have thought that you were boasting a little bit, but I, honestly, you must have amazing hand-eye coordination. You're you're a baseball player. You are at the highest level of the game. Um, do you think that that helped out? Well, let me back up. I got good at it after about five years, I should say, or a solid two years shooting this same bow. And this this PSR from Black Widow, I went from shooting a nice Hoyt compound with all the bells and whistles to getting that Samick Sage, graduating from that, to where I was lethal at 15 or 20 yards, not yeah. straight out there. But I wanted something a little prettier, may I say a little sexier to look at. So I do a lot of business in Springfield. The Black Widow guys are right next door. I went in there once a month for two or three years, looking and touching and feeling and shooting everything they have on the wall. And I said, one of these days, I'm going to get one of these. They're so beautiful. Well, a buddy of mine said, hey, I know somebody selling a used one. And because it was left-handed, I got a great deal on it, probably half the price of one, a brand new one. And I said, so I went from shooting a compound to shooting the shortest, lightest uh, 50 style recurve with a longbow grip, probably the most difficult of all yeah. bows or one of the most difficult to shoot. For and sure. it took me over two years to where I would take it in the woods and feel comfortable shooting at 15 to 18 yards. And then, and only then did I have a little success. So now I've ordered a new one, a PSA 62 inch, a little longer, a little heavier, a better grip, more forgiving. I'm so excited to get, it's got carbon limbs, wood riser. So it's going to be what I consider a real shooter. And now that I know a lot more about single string shooting and, and follow uh, Yaka, who was on your, uh, on yeah, your, Matt and dimmer and these guys and watching youtube and watching you and visiting personally with cody greenwood and some of the stuff he does and aaron snyder and this whole wave of people on instant uh, on instagram or otherwise social media 
learning more and more. But until you get out in the backyard and figure out your bow and your arrows, and and then with broadheads up in a tree, it is it is quite the deal. But being an ex athlete, having hand eye coordination, if I've heard it once, I've heard it. Oh, it's like going to baseball. Well, I was a gr- good baseball player, made to the major leagues as a defensive specialist. I was not a great hitter. I had my moments, but defensively, I could throw a baseball and I could lob it and hit you in the chest. I could throw it as hard as I want, hit you in the chest from home to second, very athletic with the baseball and throwing wise. So that has helped me to picture and to visualize. But again, until you get out there in the yard or garage or your shop or barn and sling thousands of arrows, I don't think anybody is a natural. I mean, it, many, many hours, you know, wife and goes to bed and I'm in the dark with the spotlight shooting arrows into so thousands and thousands upon thousands of arrows. And even then, you, I feel you almost have to do it on a daily basis to stay in form like a major league baseball player. Those hitters, seven, eight hours a day, they're hitting off the tee, they're hitting soft toss, they're throwing, they're fielding. They're perfecting their craft. They have good days and bad days, and good weeks and bad weeks. It's just part of it. Yeah. So, are you are you are you keeping up with any of the baseball now? Or you know what? I've got the hunting bug like I have for thirty two years now. So bad, and even more this fall because the leaves are starting to change. The cool weather's coming around. I have a trip uh, starting this weekend in Kansas, southeast Kansas, on on a big ranch. I'm I'm going to go hunt, but I have not. I follow baseball that much. I'll follow the World Series for sure. But I'm, I'm at, are you still involved at all in baseball? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't followed much on TV, but I do private lessons a day or two a week on the side. Uh, and then in June and July in the summers, I coach a college prospect uh, group of young teenagers. Wow. We were 14 to 15. Yeah. Last couple of years because of COVID, a lot of summer leagues for the college age kid has not made. So I've actually coached college age kids, JUCO kids, even some D1 kids, and get a summer program. We play about five or six weekends in a row, uh, double hitters during the week, maybe a couple games on the weekend uh, for an organization called Sandlot Baseball here in Tulsa. Sandlot. That's fantastic. That, no, that's that is fantastic. So what? So, but then let's 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 shift gears to to hunting. So tell tell me everything you've done. So if basically, when I met you at the Rod Jenkins Clinic, you were just like, "Yeah, I'm going off. I'm going to be starting doing some hunting." And you've had like a season, right? Tell us about your season. Well, I started uh, probably even before elk season. I have a customer and friend of mine that has a uh, a ranch down in southwest Oklahoma. There's a lot of turkeys and a lot of hogs. The turkeys were not available, but you can shoot the hogs year round. Yeah. And uh, so he has feeders that he runs and uh, he's like, yeah, let's whack a few. So I've shot a few hogs with my recurve out of a, uh, a pretty high hang on stand. His son hung way too darn high. I ran <laughs> scary. nine yards just to the ground. <laughs> so 27, 28 feet, the, the feeder was at 22 yards, and they come in right the last minute. He has some lights on the feeder, so if they come in after dark, you can still hunt, so he has a permit to do that. So I shot a couple, uh, and that's interesting. Out of a box blind, five feet up the ground during the daylight, not too difficult, but at night, in a tree stand, 10 yards up, 22 yards. Yeah, I made a couple nice shots that, on video, too. That was fun. So I get to do that several times a year. And then I went elk hunting. Uh, My son and I went to uh, between Durango and Silverton units 74, had a couple close calls. It's his second year in a row to go with me. I've been the last six years in a row. The last two years I've taken my my Black Widow. Had a couple close calls. We called some cows and a spike in about 30 yards, uh, but they were not legal. It was a bull only. So Came home empty-handed, but some great memories with my son. October 8th, we both went uh, uh, some private land. We went antelope hunting in the panhandle of Oklahoma. and uh, But I knew it was going to be super windy. It was long shots, so I took my Hoyt, and we ended up getting one. He nicked one, and then we both went in to try to get it, and it was bedded, and I made a nice shot on it, and it's a delicious uh, antelope meat. That's the first time I've had that. 
and yeah. uh, great, great meat. And it's all in the preparation, as you know, made a good, quick, uh, clean, quick kill. Got it, got it, got it on ice, got it home. And uh, then I've whitetail hunted uh, since October 1st. Uh, but I'm holding off. I haven't shot a doe. I've had plenty of opportunities, but holding off for a particular buck or two and just not, they haven't come in when I've been in stands. So yeah, I like to get in the woods a lot. Yeah, that's good, man. I, I'm glad that you're able to do that. And uh, I guess your job affords you to do that kind of thing. And I know some people, you know, for me, um, I, I feel I'm the same as you. I got to be honest with you. I am like, go, go, go. My wife is, can you slow down? Just pick one thing and just do it. Right. And I think, uh, you know, this year I've been out, uh, just a few times up in the stand because I haven't seen anything come in on the cameras yet. It's been too warm here in Kansas. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. I, you know, I don't want to jinx you for your trip coming up here. Um, but it, it, we're getting a cold front come in. So I think you're yeah. going to be good. I think you're going to yeah. be really good. There's um, rain. Storms coming, northwest wind. It's going to be in the 40s, uh, yep. southeast Kansas in the mid 40s. But with the wind, it'll be chilly enough. Deer, even the last two nights here outside of Tulsa, I went to my deer lease to check on the cameras and a couple things. And the deer were really moving well last night. I I worked, got all sweated up working on a waterfowl project and water and pump with my buddy. So I was a stinky mess. I didn't even get in a stand. I came home. But the deer camera were full of good pictures last night and this morning. Was like, so, you know, it, it's funny. Cause I was, I was listening to, um, I was listening to push the other day and, and they had uh, uh, Mike on there. Who's going to be on this show too. Um, and he, he was hunting in, in, and they were talking about, anyway, long story short, they're talking about the red moon uh, and how that impacts hunting. I don't know anything about that. And I don't know if you know anything about that, but so they're talking about it and they're saying, okay, well, you know, the, um, tomorrow, like yesterday is going to be the start of the red moon. And I thought, oh, well, you know, I, I don't believe in that stuff. You know, I, I've never, I've never hunted by the moon. I know some people that do. And then I saw a, pen, a study at a Pennsylvania university that said in the, in the moon phases do not impact whatsoever the, the movement of deer. Uh, they will move at their regular pace the way they want to. Uh, and it has no impact. So I, I didn't put much credence into it. But last night on my camp, I got it. I got like I have four does on the camera come in and I had zero on the camera before that. So I don't know what's going on, but maybe I'm changing my mind a little bit. Well, last night, definitely. Uh, we drove around some food plots an hour before dark and there were 25 on this 21 here, more deer than me and my buddy, his property that I've seen in the last two weeks. But also, it was like 55 degrees. It was a yeah. lot cooler than it had cool. been. And those deer come out at night, but they came out a lot earlier. And I don't know. I'm not a moon guy either. I like to go hunting when I can get away and go hunting. Now, yeah. and I plan my elk hunts the end of September because in September, they're going to be bugling more. And sometimes it's a full moon. Sometimes it's not. But I, I try to go when I can go. And that's all I can control. Hey, so we got a little off topic, but I, I love to hear about hunting. I love your story and stuff like that. This show is more about, you know, who you are as the archer and, and person, which I think is really, you're really awesome. <laughs> you know, so to be honest with you, this is really good. But hey, how about, um, how about we uh, talk a little bit about your equipment really quick? I know you talked a little, you touched on it. So tell us when you are recurve hunting, yep. uh, what, I know it's a, a Black Widow, but give us the specs on it, weight, poundage um what kind of string anyone you want to any of our single string people you want to uh, promote whether it's you know um black widow or whatever and then what arrows you're shooting as well your arrow set up for hunting i truly have not picked up my uh, compound in about three years so when i went on that antelope trip i had to shoot a couple arrows and i felt like i was cheating because i'm at full draw i'm, I'm, I'm fit strong enough to pull just 60 pounds and i'm 55 pounds with my compound and my draw excuse me uh with my black widow and you just line it up and push the button and you hit it was like okay this is not fair but that's why i love the you know struggle stick because it's not always that easy it can be easy one day in your backyard with no win you think you're a world champion then you hunt the next night at 15 yards and you shoot over doe three times. I'm like, how is this happening? Uh, there's a lot involved, the height and the deer and the animal and the adrenaline, but that's what I love about it. So yeah, uh, 
I've had this Black Widow PSRX 60 inch bow. It's 50 pounds at 28 inches, but I'm drawing 30 and a half inches. So yeah, you're a tall okay. dude. You're like, how well, tall are you? I'm six one. I, I was six foot till I had my knee redone, and now I'm a, my bow legs are a little bit taller. I'm the full six one now, which is nice. Uh, I need my right one done, and I'll be probably six one in a little bit. But yeah, thirty. I, I didn't know my draw. I was just in Black Widow uh, uh, last month, and what's your draw? I'm like, I don't know. Twenty nine with my Hoyt. I don't know. It's whatever this is, and so he measured me while I was shooting, shooting, shooting. 30 and a half. And he goes, that's kind of standard, about an inch and a half more than, than most people would shoot a compound or what they're measured at. So, uh, uh, I shoot some really nice arrows that just, I love these arrows. I've always been a, uh, uh, access guy, you know, over yep, my but for these treads, I shot gold tip. I just got started with gold tip and then I got some gold tip trad XPs. You know, they have that footed look. They're just cool looking. Right. Uh, I fletch my own arrows. I've done, you know, they all come with five inch, three, five inch. And so a lot of them are left handed. I strip those off if I can't get bare shaft. I usually do three, four inch fletches. And then with different, you know, information that's out there now, Cody said, man, put, put four, three inches. So I've done a little bit of it. I've shot the trad veins. The trad veins for me, they just don't come off my Black Widow shelf as smoothly. Uh, probably me, the way I cast them in the glue, they just keep rip, ripping off my shelf. It's frustrating. So anyway, uh, I, I laugh because I always, I always make fun of trad veins too. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I just don't. Now, I took a couple in my quiver elk hunt in the case we got rain yeah. apart, even though I dipped Agreed. my feathers in the powder and they, they, they look better, they fly better, they're quieter. But yeah, if they get wet, I might be in trouble, but it doesn't rain a lot in Colorado. But I had, uh, I think, two uh, trad vein uh, fletched arrows in my quiver. And I'm for that hunt, I, I've shot a couple different broadheads. Uh, I bought some uh, iron wheel broadheads a couple years ago, and I realized I don't like shoot those at hogs or rocky ground because uh, they're not cheap. And man, they're so nice and sharp and deadly. Yeah. Yeah. when you hit where you need to hit but i shoot other stuff now i'm experimenting uh with the cutthroats i've shot I, I got a nice buck on the wall behind me i shot with the two blade cutthroat last year it was a deadly hit the deer ran 100 yards but like most people say the blood trail wasn't that great but the animal was dead and that's the main thing but i don't see red and green uh like a lot of gentlemen i don't see red and green very well uh, I have a dog that's legal to help me uh, use in Oklahoma if need be. She's found quite a few deer for me the last couple of years. But uh, now I got uh, three blade cutthroats mm. and they look wicked. They're 125 yeah. grains. Uh, I shoot a 100 grain uh, stainless steel insert and uh, with those trad XTs and for me, the arrow flies very well. It's not very short arrow. It's not full length. I forget the length, probably 31 and a half or so, if I had to guess. Uh, but with that deadly broad hit, I can't wait to get out in the woods and, and put that through a doe or a, a nice big buck. That's a, that's a great setup. That is, that is a great setup. Hey, so if um, last thing, um, what advice would you kind of give to uh, someone new to archery? And it could be someone new in, it could be someone getting into archery or someone who get, who's getting into hunting too. Either, either one, either, either answer would be great. It's just like people that are afraid to go elk hunting. One day I just, me and my nephew and brother said, let's do it. We just did it. We were clueless. We struggled. We were not successful, but the next year we got one. The next year we got one. And then a bunch of close calls. You just got to do it whether it is a compound or, but the stick bow, even if you don't hunt, there's a lot of people that don't hunt. It is fun to shoot a stick bow. And I don't mean fling 38 yards across the, the backyard like I do, because uh, that's really fun, but 10 and 12 and 15 yards. When you can hit a tennis ball at 15 yards, it's super exciting. Not to say, especially when you can Robin head your first arrow, Robin Hood your first arrow at 20 yards. And I don't mean when there's 10 in there and you hit one of them, you put one in the bullseye and the next one hits it. 
even though you probably ruined two arrows because they're going to go on the trophy case like I got, but it's fun to do it. But just get a Samic Sage for 150 bucks. Get some cheap arrows because you're going to ruin them and lose them and bust them. Get some practice points. Go to the local archery shop. Uh, get set up. It doesn't cost a lot. Get you a big bag target at Bass Pro or wherever for 49 bucks. Uh, the bigger, the better, because you're going to need it. And what I did, I went to uh, up the lake uh, and got a giant piece of styrofoam. It's probably four foot by six foot, two foot thick as a backdrop. So because you will miss it, you'll shoot three row in the bull and then somehow you miss 18 inches. You're like, how did that happen? Well, <laughs> you plucked it. You did this and you'll learn how to shoot as you go. The main thing, get a bow, get some arrows and start shooting and get your kids or get a buddy, get a, a nephew or get your daughter, son or wife and shoot with somebody. It is so much fun. And then if you like it and fortunate to have some land and some property, yeah, in Oklahoma where it's legal, if you can throw some corn on the ground and hang a ladder stand, very simple, very safe, the deer will find it. And start like I did. You'll shoot a couple squirrels. Then you'll shoot a Boone and Crockett uh, raccoon that will come in that's been eating your corn every night. And the first time I, the first animal I shot, I hard shot a raccoon at 20 yards. I was like, God, if I can hit that, I can hit anything. Well, sure. good confidence. I missed a few does. And, but anyway, it's fun. Just get out there and give it a shot. Well, Rick, thank you very much for being on the show, man. Really appreciate your time today. And uh, man, if anyone uh, wants to follow you, where do they where do they go find you? I'm on Instagram. I never did do a Facebook, but I'm on Instagram. My kids said, Dad, you're shooting this and golfing left handed out of doing trick shots and this and that. You you put up some fun stuff, not too much. But, and now lately I've put a few animals and try to be real classy about that and picture occasionally on you know, Insta group. If I shoot a good group of arrows before elk hunt, I'm guilty. I posted my good group, not the I ones know. where my arrows are we spread. Do. We all do. We Insta all do. Group. Yeah, I'm guilty, guilty, <laughs> but just uh, Rick Rona, R I C K W R O N A. And I'm on there. So uh, I post some stuff, but I don't have a giant following, but guys like you and other people that, we share some cool pics or what we're doing. It's fun to, I, I follow a lot of people because it's fun to see people out doing stuff in the outdoors. And I'm a big believer in that. Get out there and do something. Awesome, man. Thank you very much again. Uh, for everyone that's stuck around and listen, don't forget to go give him a follow on Instagram. Thanks for watching this. Uh, and we'll talk to you next time. See you later. Thanks, Mick. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you for being on.